Welcome to Bed Crime Stories Podcast. I'm your host, T. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bed crimers. As always, I wish you the best. To anyone new here, a warm welcome. Thank you for checking out my channel. Let me just ask that after listening to or watching this video, if you learned something or enjoyed it, please do me a favor and smash that like button. Now let's dig in. Happy news to report finally on the Dylan Rounds case. You may recall that 19-year-old farmer Dylan went missing from his farm in Lucine, Utah back on May 28th of 2022. He had just made a call to his grandmother telling her that he was in the act of getting his grain truck to a nearby shelter. It just so happens that a 59-year-old man named James Brenner, a well-known violent man, was squatting in a trailer on the property with the shelter. Dylan was never seen or heard from again after that call to his grandmother, and his body remains missing to this day. Dylan's parents remain optimistic that their son will be found in the spring once the snow melts. Let's hope they get their miracle on that count. Last Friday, key suspect Brenner, who has been in the Box Elder County Jail on unrelated weapons violations since June of 2022, was finally charged with one count of aggravated red rum, spell that from the back forward and you'll know what I mean, and one count of abuse or desecration of a body. The charges were filed last Friday in the Box Elder County Attorney's Office. The second charge indicates that Brenner did something to Dylan's body to desecrate it and then moved it and concealed it somewhere. So far, Brenner has been mum and refused to speak. According to the newly released probable cause affidavit, the spot of blood that was found on Dylan's boots when they were located behind a dirt pile on the property where Brenner was squatting, had both Dylan's DNA in it and that of James Brenner. Brenner, you are busted. And here's the other kicker. When Dylan's cell phone was found, the investigators were able to extract the data. So that phone was not destroyed as we were told. The phone data showed that the last signal from Dylan's phone was at the Lucin Pond, which is where the phone was found. A digital download of the phone was conducted and led to the discovery of a time-lapse video with a timestamp taken at the exact time Dylan disappeared. This would indicate that Dylan's phone was on recording a video when he had whatever altercation with Brenner. That is stunning news. And then the video showed Brenner with blood stains on his arms and shirt cleaning a gun. James Brenner, you are doubly busted, you monster. Dylan appears to have solved his own case with his cell phone. Another video on a victim's phone catching the suspect at the crime scene at the time the crime occurred. By the way, blood on Brenner's shirt was also analyzed, and Dylan's blood was found on the shirt. I think we know we have our perpetrator. And guess what? It's also possible that the entire crime was captured on that video. Remember, probable cause affidavits do not include all the evidence investigators have, just enough to compel a judge to sign them. If you care to read the very short probable cause affidavit, I have put it in the community page. Until the next time on Bed Crime Stories, I hope you guys have a great day.